Ghost. Holy Ghost, fall down. How many people want the Holy Ghost to fall down? Come on, let me see those hands. Lift those hands. How many want the Holy Ghost to fall down? I need the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost to fall down on me this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to his name. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place, moving up and down, touching hearts and healing and delivering and walking up and down the aisles. How many of you can feel his presence in this place on this Pentecost Sunday? And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. We give honor to the Spirit of Christ, to our Bishop and First Lady in their absence. Let's thank God for them, Bishop Jerome Stokes and Lady Marshall Stokes. We honor all of the associate pastors, elders, ministers, uh, saints, and friends. And we honor you, all of God's people, and we welcome you uh, to Pentecost. 2018. We welcome you to Pentecost 2018. How many of you are ready for a word from the Lord? Amen. 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 We're going to ask that you would turn with us, if you would, to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. When you have the word, say amen. While you're seated, just, just reach over and grab that neighbor's hand that you're holding. So we're going to pray collectively before we go further. Come on, let, let's just get on one accord and bring all of our hearts and all of our minds and all of our spirits as we are already gathered together in one place. Let's just bring all of us together. I want, as we go forth, that neighbor's hand you're holding to... To, to lift your prayers this morning off yourself and begin to pray uh, for that neighbor's hand that you're holding. Uh, somebody in here might have a crisis, a, a 911 emergency. You don't know what people had to press through to get here this morning. So as we go forth be, be, on this Pentecost Sunday with the Holy Ghost presence being in this place, I want you to lift those prayers off yourself and begin to pray. Come on, let's pray. Come on, Zion. Father, right now, Dear God, in the name of Jesus, we honor you and we thank you and we bless you and we celebrate you in this place. We honor you, God, on this Pentecost Sunday. We are coming to celebrate the falling and the descent of the Holy Ghost. So, God, we thank you, God, for the power and the baptism and the anointing of your spirit. We don't know where we would be without your spirit, God. We don't know where we would be without your power and anointing operating in our lives. So now, God, have your way in this house continually. Walk up and down the aisles and touch. Walk up and down the aisles and heal. Walk up and down the aisles and deliver. Holy Ghost, we need you in this house this morning. Holy Ghost, we need you to preach this word. Holy Ghost, we need you to teach this word. Holy Ghost, we need you to fall fresh. Holy Ghost, heal. Holy Ghost, deliver. Holy Ghost, destroy every bondage. Holy Ghost, drive out every demon. Holy Ghost, we're leaning and depending on the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the fire. Thank you for the glory. Thank you for the anointing. Let the Holy Ghost heal us. Let the Holy Ghost strengthen us. Let the Holy Ghost empower us. And we'll be careful to give you praise. We'll be careful to give you glory. We'll be careful to give you honor. Because it's nothing but the Holy Ghost that we are here today. The demons want to kill us this week. But the Holy Ghost stood in front and blocked every assignment. Blocked every attack. Blocked every assault. So God, we have gathered together to give you glory for the Holy Ghost. We open up our mouths and we shout to you with the voice of triumph. We shout to you with the voice of victory. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the fire. Thank you for the glory. Come on, Zion, shout. 
Have your way, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, heal. Holy Ghost, deliver. Holy Ghost, save. Holy Ghost, sanctify. Holy Ghost, purify. Holy Ghost, break every yoke. Holy Ghost, break every bondage. And we give you the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, we submit this service to the Flusha. We submit this service, every aspect of the rest of this service, to the move and flow of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. We're going to read one verse. You all pray for me this morning. We're going to read one verse. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Let's read that one more time together. Come on, let's read. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So far, the scripture. Look at somebody near you and just repeat this thought with me. Uh, say, I am anointed. with infinite power. Now look at somebody else and say, I am anointed with infinite power. Put those hands together and bless them. Anointed with infinite power. Power can be defined as a level of control one has over an interaction. This interaction can be of any sort from a glance across the room to two countries signing a treaty. Power, however, is not a permanent condition because one's power can change from moment to moment. Someone who has all power in one situation may have none in another. Power has been likened to a hill that every time people interact with each other, they are either moving up or down. The powerful moving higher than the people that they dominate. Now, this dynamic is not just limited to individuals, but whole countries or groups of people can seek out power as a unit. People of color women, people of different sexual orientations, people in poverty and other groups are often put in danger by power imbalances in society. So oppressed individuals seek out justice so that they can attain security and power in their lives to have the same freedoms as everyone else. All throughout history, African American history, there has been and is every going battle rather uh, for equal rights, respect, fairness, a search uh, for safety. And recently in Oakland, California, I believe, uh, there was a, a situation uh, where uh, a, a woman was trying to execute power over some brothers and a few sisters having a barbecue. And there are plenty of memes all over social media to keep you laughing for days. She wanted to control their right and freedom to have a legitimate barbecue on the grounds that they were on. And the truth of the matter is all they had to do was give her a, a double burger with cheese, <laughs> some ketchup and some mustard because she looked like she didn't miss any meals. When we talk about power, there are many things that motivate people in their quest for power. People fear losing power or 
losing control over others and will do anything to keep their position, their, their little status. This can lead to greed, corruption, and crime. Many people in the world system and, yes, in the church, mm, try to do a lot for power. So there is a psychological motivation for power. People want to get power and influence and the ability to do something. So when we talk about people's motivations and their intentions for why, why they seek out power, understand that there are two types of power, two types. First, there is finite power, finite. This is power that has limits or boundaries. It is limited, it is restricted, it is determinate, and it is fixed. Finite power. There is also infinite power. This power is limitless or endless in space, in extent, in size. The infinite power is impossible to measure or to calculate. Infinite power is boundless. It is never ending and it varies in amount or degree. Recently in the theaters, there was in the Marvel Cinematic Film Avengers Infinity War. I like that. A battle for infinite power. There was a war going on for power. The battle was over these special gems called Infinity Stones. These Infinity Stones were really powerful stones that were powerful in themselves, but when they were united, they could destroy people and wipe out entire solar systems. There were six of them. Space Stone, Reality Stone, Power Stone, Mind Stone, Time Stone, and the Soul Stone. There was a battle over power between this ugly, evil, purple alien named Thanos, who was referred to as the Mad Titan. And he was battling against God's courageous heroes, the Avengers, or Earth's courageous heroes, the Avengers, for salvation over Earth. This guy, Thanos, he was seeking out this infinite power. He had this mentality, and today is Pentecost Sunday, but May is Mental Health Month. Thanos was under what we in the psychological world call a delusion. He had a fixed, false belief. He believed that he had to balance out the universe due to overpopulation. So he thought it was his right to kill entire planets, to kill entire nations and try to wipe out the universe. This was his mindset. So, so it, it goes to show you, too, uh, sometimes when people are seeking out power, they are distorted in their thinking patterns. Now, these stones, we find, were so powerful, they were so infinite in their power that if a person held them long enough, uh, like we saw in Guardians of the Galaxy Part 1, if a person held them long enough, they ran the risk of dying. So this guy Thanos said, I, I have to have a special device made to hold this much power, to hold these infinity stones, because when when all the stones came together, it was dangerous. So he had a, he had a, a guy create a, what they call an infinity gauntlet. It was like a sleeve that he could put on to put all of the stones in. And I, I want to submit to you this morning that this, this uh, fictional guy, uh, Thanos, uh, needed a gauntlet to contain the power of the infinity stones and in here this morning God is saying to all of us that I have anointed you with infinite infinite power I just need a vessel that I can endow with my power so you also have been given power and it is not cosmic power 
power. It is not superhero power. It is not solar power. It is not even economic power, but it is the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. It is the power that can do what no other power but the Holy Ghost power can do. Can I get a witness? Does anybody can testify this morning that you, you had and have some situations that nothing can happen, nothing can work except the power of the Holy Ghost. Finite power versus infinite power. Uh, so we move from looking at this power, this power of the Lord. Listen, it changes the ordinary into the extraordinary. It causes us to do things that we in normal senses could not do to be what we could not be. This power moves us from being restricted to being limitless. This power moves us from being finite to operating in infinite power. This power moves us from being deficient to the deutimous release of the explosive power of the Holy Ghost. And God says, when I anoint you with infinite power, you will go forth and do greater works. Somebody shout hallelujah. And in here this morning, on this Sunday, this Pentecost Sunday, what we are doing this Pentecost Sunday, you have heard this phrase a few times today uh, as Elder Fletcher was up. We want to talk a few moments, give you just a few tidbits about uh, Pentecost as we go forth. Pentecost, listen, is the annual celebration of the fall or the descent of the Holy Ghost, both Christians and Jew, Jews celebrate Pentecost. Uh, for us as Christians, we typically celebrate Pentecost uh, 50 days after Easter. But in the Jewish history and culture, the celebration by the Jews of Pentecost is to observe God giving the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai not 50 days after Easter for them, but 50 days after the Exodus. So the Pentecost in Jewish culture takes place 50 days after Passover, and they celebrate the sealing of the Old Covenant on Mount Sinai. And when we look at the book of Acts, in the, the, the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, it recounts the story of the original Pentecost Sunday. The Jews from every nation under heaven were gathered in Jerusalem to, to celebrate the Jewish feast of Pentecost. But on that Sunday, 10 days after the ascension of Jesus, the apostles and the Virgin Mary were gathered together in the upper room where they had seen Christ after his resurrection. John 16 verses 5 through 15 tells us of the promise of Pentecost. Jesus had promised to send the Holy Ghost. Now, I want you to understand that Pentecost just didn't happen. Uh, there was suffering. There was death. There had to be a burial and a, a resurrection of Jesus prior to the Holy Ghost falling. Jesus had to descend, then ascend, so that the Holy Ghost could fall upon men. We know, we know. Acts chapter 2, Peter was preaching. They were all on one accord, one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And the Bible tells us that it filled the house where they were sitting. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gave utterance. Pentecost Sunday marks the day when the Holy Ghost descended upon the apostles. Pentecost comes 10 days after the ascension of Christ. Pentecost is known as the birthday of the church. Pentecost launched the large-scale spreading of the gospel after Jesus' ascension. Acts 2 and 41 records that after Peter spoke to the crowd, that after they received the Holy Ghost, some 3,000 people uh, were baptized. 
I want to submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that Pentecost, listen, is not a denomination. Pentecost is not a fellowship. Pentecost is not a movement. Pentecost is not an event. But Pentecost is an experience. And I'm so glad for Pentecost. I'm so glad to have the experience. It is an experience that will change you. And if no change has occurred, then you might want to go back to the altar if there has been no change in your life. But Pentecost brings change. Pentecost brings revival. Pentecost brings renewal. Pentecost brings refreshing. I need about a hundred people to shout hallelujah because you're grateful for Pentecost. And I, we have been endowed with infinite power. That means every time we come into the house of the Lord, we should seek for an experience of Pentecost. So I wake up each week, and as I'm getting myself together to go to the house of the Lord, I am looking for an experience of Pentecost. So much so that as the scripture said that the glory fills the house and the priest could not stand to minister. How many of you are grateful for your Pentecost experience? Uh, all throughout this word, what I want to do, what I'm going to holler out, make it Pentecost. And when I say make it Pentecost on this Pentecost Sunday, all I want you to do with one voice and one sound is to shout hallelujah. All right, come on, let's try it. Come on, come on, believers, let's make it Pentecost. Come on, let me hear the prayer. Come on, let's try it again. Let's make it Pentecost. Make it Pentecost. There you go. So when we look, we're going to make it Pentecost in here. We can have our own shift and sudden movement. If you all come together with oneness, we can experience our own suddenly. Anybody believe we can experience a shaking in the house? That we can experience a sudden movement because God has anointed us with infinite power. Pentecost. So let's, when we look at our scripture text, this one verse, it says, but, and I'll repeat, we have, we, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So here in our text, the apostle Paul had signified his intentions of coming uh, to Corinth uh, as he passed through Macedonia but being hindered some, he wrote this second epistle to them. There were a manifold of sufferings that he and his fellow laborers were going through at the time. And so this chapter here uh, deals with the, and shows the constancy of the apostle and his fellow laborers in their work. This chapter also shows the carriage and patience that they had under their sufferings. And I want you to understand this morning that you have been anointed with infinite power. When we say anoint, it is to smear or rub with oil. Typically part of the religious ceremonies to consecrate, to bless, and ordain. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Jesus promised to send the Holy Ghost as the comforter who would lead and guide us into all truth. So the Holy Ghost falling on the day of Pentecost was a manifestation of the promise. And I don't know about you, but if you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you have to understand that that is already one promise that God has kept to you. He is a promise keeper. But the scripture says, after the Holy Ghost fell and came upon them. And, and here is the problem in the church. Here is one of the issues. We have a whole lot of people doing a whole lot without any power. My God, without any power. We got a whole lot of 
people skipping the after, the after, the after. He wants you to go forth and do your work and your ministry and your calling after. After. Somebody holler after. After you get the power. Sit down, sit down, sit yourself down. Get some power. Get some glory. Get some anointing. You're going to need power to fight this stuff. You're going to need power to fight these demons. You're going to need power to fight yourself. Am I right? So he, 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 can't, he, he is a he, he's not a it. He, the Holy Ghost, he, he, umbasha, he, glory. The third person of the Trinity, he, I feel this God. Listen, he comes in to rule, to reign, but we have to let him. So first, you've been anointed with infinite power. The first thing I want you to realize, it is infinite power that reveals. His spirit, the Holy Ghost, comes into our human spirit to place our human spirit under arrest. And when he comes in, he kando shabasa, he comes into the vessel to take control and to tell all of the faculties inside you that I am here now. And I remember, I'm not going to reveal my age, but I remember, and I was 12 years old. And I was tarrying for the Holy Ghost. Ah, back then we tarried for the Holy Ghost. And I was on my knees in a tarrying service. And all I know is that I was on my knees and I was just saying hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And there were other times where I was on my knees and I was saying Jesus, 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 Jesus. And you know, you can't call on that name too long. You start saying Jesus, 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 Jesus. And suddenly something happened down on the inside of me and that English turned over. And that became a language that started coming out of me. And I was saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And all of a sudden, there was a power that was birthed. He, infinite power that it reveals. So, so he comes in. Listen, the scripture says, You have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. We were dead. His spirit came into our spirit. And when he came in, he took control. He came in and he started taking away stuff. And he took control first over our mouths because the tongue is a deadly poison full of evil. So he came in and he took control. And he, he took dominance. He took dominion. So he, he took. And then when he came in, he, he gave us some things. He says, I'm giving you power. I'm giving you power over yourself. I'm giving you power over demons and devils, and I'm giving you power over this world system. The scripture says, listen, but we have this treasure. Who are the we? We. We that have been redeemed. We that have been called. We that have been blood washed. We that have been transformed. We have this treasure. This infinite power reveals, listen, the treasure that's inside of you. There is something valuable inside you that God wants to use. There is something of worth that God has deposited in your spirit before the foundation of the world. So when you continue to walk with God, he says, you find out about the treasure that's on the inside of you. Some of you may have some treasures on inside of you that you are sitting on that God is trying to stir up by the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, there's something valuable, something of worth. The scripture tells us beforehand that that he knew us before we were born. We have this treasure where? In, good God, in earthen vessels. <laughs> earthen vessels, what does that mean? Jars of clay, we are jars of clay or vessels of clay. So as earthen vessels, we carry the glory of God in these earthen vessels. So that means we need to be aware of what we do with these vessels. My God, it's Pentecost. We need to be aware of where we 
go with these vessels. I hear you. We need to be aware of who we touch with these vessels. We need to be aware of who we let touch us in these vessels. These are earthen vessels. We have, because you can't, you, you, you have to tell some, some situations that's trying to contaminate and defile you. You cannot touch my vessel because there is treasure on the inside of me because I have infinite power that's going to reveal my treasure. So he says, I let the revelation of the treasure that's inside of you come into your understanding because I have anointed you for a task, for a duty, for an operation in my kingdom. I did not anoint you to sit. And as we walk with God, as we walk through the process of the anointing, he begins to reveal. He shows us. Isaiah 61 and 1 says, listen, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because... The Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So he has anointed you, and it is an anointing with infinite power that, that reveals so that you can get busy and work in the kingdom of God. But sometimes we have a... Uh, a conundrum because you can have an anointing and not be anointed and I believe we have a whole lot of people that might have an anointing to sing an anointing to play instruments an anointing to preach an anointing to prophesy but have never really walked through the process so that their vessels can become anointed <laughs> so ask your neighbor say are you anointed or are you appointed? Are you Saul? Or are you David? What is this process of the anointing? Now, each of these points, I'm going to reveal unto you a key operation of the Holy Ghost. And each of these points, I'm going to share with you. The, 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 the process of the anointing. There is a process that you must go through to get the oil out of your vessel. The olive groves, listen, usually had an oil press nearby where heavy stone will crush the fruit and it, it became a hard kernel so that the pulp was placed in a press which extracted the precious yellow oil. So the anointing of God, it is a precious ointment and it will cost you it's going to cost you everything for God to fill your vessel with the anointing tell somebody you might not like it you might not understand it but I am anointed I carry some oil in my vessel I might not look like it but I'm anointed I might not look like it but what did Drake say I'm a part of God's plan God's plan God's plan And the key operation of the Holy Ghost here in the revelation is that he operates as the leading and guiding us into all truth. That's the key operation in this infinite power that reveals. That is the, the, the key operation of the Holy Ghost. He operates to lead and guide you into all truth. So he said, I come to show you and reveal unto you, not to put into you, but uncover what is the treasure that is already in you. So it is the infinite power that reveals. Secondly, it is the infinite power that resurrects. As we are walking with God, as we are laboring with God, sometimes doing the work and the ministry of God, we get tired, we get weary, we get frustrated, and there are things and aspects of our lives that might die. We might feel like we have died in ways. So God said that that. I have infinite power that is able to resurrect you. So I came this morning to speak to every dead person in every dead area of your life that God wants you to activate and the wind of the Holy Ghost is coming to resurrect you today because you're anointed with infinite power, power that
dead resurrect. He's going to resurrect your dead dreams. Resurrect your dead relationships. Resurrect your dead ministry. Resurrect your dead situations. Resurrect your dead belief systems. All he says is, I need about 15 people to roll away the stone and call Lazarus forth. Because I have infinite power that will resurrect you. Shout hallelujah. Come on, let's make it Pentecost. Come on, let's make it Pentecost. Shout. Infinite power that resurrects. Uh, you got to say to yourself, uh, I'm getting up today. I'm rising up today. Even if you have been spiritually suicidal, <laughs> where you said spiritually, I'm going to kill myself. And I don't want to live no more. And I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, anybody been there? Come on, tell the truth. I've been there. I don't want to walk with this way no more. I, I want to die in this. I want to die like this. But God says, I'm not allowing you to die. Because they are Shando Rebekisha. Because there is infinite power inside of you to resurrect your spirit. So you got to live, 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 live. The key operation, the key operation of the Holy Ghost in the infinite power that resurrects is he operates as the finisher. <laughs> so he that has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And he says this morning, if I have to bring you back from the grave, and I can tell and I come to loose the grave sites of everybody that's in a grave this morning. Tap somebody and say, take those grave clothes off. You've got infinite power that resurrects. Now get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up in your mind. Get up in your emotions. Get up in your health. Get up in your goals. Get up in your ministry. Get up, get up, get up. Get up, get up and go. Get up and go. In the Marvel Cinematic Film, many people were devastated at the end. I wasn't because Thor was alive. <laughs> I know. Some of you were devastated because T'Challa or Black Panther vanished away into dust. And, and many of your other favorite characters. Uh, but I believe in resurrection power. <laughs> And in the movie, I believe Dr. Strange is a prophet and will work the working of miracles. Like in here this morning, I believe that the Holy Ghost is the resurrection power. So I need about a hundred of you that are going to determine that you have infinite power to resurrect, to jump to your feet, shout hallelujah, and tell the devil, I'm getting up and I'm going to fight because I have infinite it power to get up to get up and live come on believers make it Pentecost make it Pentecost this same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. The same spirit. Next, it is infinite power that has dual action. It both recovers first and then secondly restores. We learn in the Bible that when David asked God, what should he do concerning his enemies? Should he pursue? God told David, what? Pursue, overtake, and recover all. And there are some of you in here this morning 
Uh, that God says, I'm about to bring you into a place through my infinite power of recovery. Oh, yes, it devastated you. Yes, the pain devastated you. You lost loved ones and it devastated you. You suffered trauma and it devastated you. Uh, they treated you that way and it devastated you. But I have infinite power in you that's going to help you recover, to help you regain, to help you come back, come back from the setback. Come back, come back, come back. You are about to recover. Yes, you. You're not going to die on the operating table, but you will, you shall, you must recover. The Holy Ghost here, in recovery, my God, you don't have to worry when you're in recovery. You don't have to be nervous and anxious when you are in recovery after the operation. There is a set time period for you to recover. And the Holy Ghost said, while you are at in your spiritual hospital recovering, all I want you to do is rest. Rest for the weary, rest for the weary, rest for the pain, rest for the suffering. Just rest. My spirit operates here as the comforter, the paraclete, if you will, the comforter. He says, I'm going away, but I'm going to send you the comforter. I will send you the paraclete, this word translated to be the comforter, who will bring all things back to your remembrance. So it is infinite power that recovers and restores uh, and we told you about the recovery part, but I, I want to talk for a moment about the restoration. Because sometimes as we are sojourning in this Christian walk, if we are truthful, we need to be restored. Uh, we need restoration in our mind, in our emotions, in our heart, in our soul, in our spirit. Uh, sometimes we need to be restored with the excellency of the power that works in us his power is not inadequate but it is excellent and everything he does he does well sometimes the enemies of our soul are trying to kill us and we need to be restored we would have been wiped out if it wasn't for his power somebody might have been cussed out if it wasn't for his power even if you have fallen away he said my spirit here operates as the internal spirit with you to be with you at all times even when you backslide even when you left the church has anybody ever backslide has anybody ever left God <clears throat> well he says I've come with my power and my authority and my anointing even when you have backslid, even when you have turned your back and left me, I've come to bring restoration. I've come to bring healing. Even when you backslid and you went into places that you shouldn't have been, God was a restorer. Do I have any witnesses that he has infinite power that will recover and restore? Come on, let's make it Pentecost. Make it Pentecost. Make it Pentecost. Infinite power that restores, recovers and restores. It is also infinite power that refills. Refills. I believe it was El Varna who had a song out, so can I get a refill? But, 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 but with us, with this infinite power that refills us, John 4 and 14 says, Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Uh, the old church used to say he gives us power to walk right, 
power to talk right, power to live right, power to get right. So God says, I have infinite power to give you a refill. And if you are drained this morning, I want you to do is to check your power. Just like you pull in your car to the car station, check your oil. Turn into the filling station and check your power. Check to see if your power is okay. You don't want to be hallelujah in here and cursing out there. But check your power. Check your power. Infinite power that refills. So he says, because I will refill you, my spirit operates as the intercessor. So the Holy Ghost is inside of me to refill me. He makes intercession before us with moanings and groanings which cannot be uttered. So even when I don't feel like praying, even when I can't pray, the Holy Ghost inside of me, he refills me by praying through me. Can I get a witness that deep calleth unto deep? The Holy Ghost operates as the intercessor to refill me. So my, he anoints my head with oil and then my cup runs over. Does anybody in here this morning need a refill? I want you to know he's come to refill you and your refill. Tell somebody your refill is free. It's free. Jump to your feet and shout hallelujah. Your refill is free. He has infinite power, infinite power, infinite power to give you a refill. So I've come to refill you today. Hallelujah. He also has infinite power that releases. That means that there is the wind of the spirit that is blowing the wind of the Holy Ghost, which is blowing in this place this morning. So that means that one, we are personally about to be released and then we are about to be released, release the power. They were singing about it earlier. He says, my infinite power will release you. It will release you from every bondage, release you from every captivity, release you from every affliction. I'm so glad that the power of God is in me to release. It is in me to release, but it's also in me to release the power through me. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. At the name of Jesus, go ahead and speak. Speak to that issue. Speak to that condition. Speak to that devil. Tell your neighbor, use the name. Use the name. Because there's infinite power in you to release. Release the power. Release the glory. Tell somebody, I am anointed with infinite power. I am anointed with infinite power. Shake unto God. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. If you know you're anointed with infinite power, come on Zion, make it Pentecost. Infinite power. It's power that protects power that protects. He says, I'm going to shield you from danger seen and unseen. I'm going to protect you from the enemy that would have wiped you out with my protective power. I'm going to protect your mind, protect your family, protect your belongings. No plague shall come nigh your dwelling because he says he will protect you. Is there anybody glad that God is your protector. Jump across the file. Tell three people, I am anointed with infinite power. Power that protects. Power that protects. Power that covers. Power that strengthens. Power that refreshes. Power. Power. Holy Ghost. Power. Do I have 10 people? who are grateful for infinite power. It's protecting you, it's covering you, watching over you, shielding you, strengthening you, 
guiding you, protecting you. Tell somebody, I've got power, power to tread upon serpents, power to walk, not be weary, power to overcome every demon, power to rebuke earthly desires, power to tell hell I've got power, power to rebuke things in my environment, power, power, power. Does anybody have power? Does anybody have power? I need about a hundred people to give God a praise like you have infinite power. I've been anointed and the devil doesn't like it. I've been anointed and the devil can't stop it. I've been anointed so greater is he, greater is he. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Infinite power. Deutimus power. Deutimus power. Deutimus power. Release your power. Release your glory. Release your anointing. I am. I am anointed with infinite power. Come on, everybody. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. One accord. One sound. One voice. One voice. One sound. Anointed with infinite power. One sound. One voice. On the count of three, we gonna make it Pentecost. On this Pentecost Sunday. Cause we've been anointed with infinite power on the count of three I want you to shout hallelujah but before you shout I want you to get that condition that circumstance that demon that's been troubling you in your mind because when we shout with one accord with one spirit with one anointing when we shout on this Pentecost Sunday, Goliath, Goliath, Goliath is going to fall. I prophesy, Goliath is about to fall. Because you're anointed, David, you're anointed, David, you're anointed. Get your slingshot ready. Get your slingshot ready. Cause your Goliath, my Goliath, is about to fall. Cause I am, I am anointed with infinite power. On the count of three, you got it in your mind. Get your slingshot ready. On the count of three, we're gonna shout with the sound of Pentecost. And I prophesy that suddenly there will be, there shall be, there must be a shaking. There shall be a sudden movement. One, get your minds together. Get your mind in focus. Get that Goliath in your side of you. Get your slingshot ready, because Goliath is coming down. Goliath is going to be defeated because you're anointed. Yes, you are. Yes, you. You are anointed with infinite power. Two. Come on, Zion. Come on. We're getting ready to use our infinite power. We're getting ready on Pentecost to use our anointing. We're getting ready to see hell tremble. Three, they'll shout with one voice, with one sound, with one voice. Ya 
Shete Bahaya, Hadad Rio Seh. Shete Baha. Come on, make it Pentecost. 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 You're anointed with infinite power. With infinite power. With infinite power. Come on, give us a sound like of a tornado, of a hurricane. You're anointed with infinite power. Just tap on in, tap on in to the power, to the glory, to the anointed. I am anointed with infinite power. I am anointed with infinite power. Anointed with infinite power. Shata Bahasia, Shando Robo Jose Beki under the Labo Shataria, under the Labo Shatara. Take both of take both of one person's hands. Take both of one person's hands. Come on, grab one person. Grab one person. We're gonna pray in here this morning. Just two people together. Link up with one other person. Just you and them. We're gonna pray in here this morning. There is a release. It is the in infinite power that releases. Just you and one other person. anointed with infinite power look at that person whose hand you're holding and tell them say listen I don't care what you're going through today you are anointed with infinite power tell them I don't care how it looks there is power in you to overcome now I want you to pray 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 in the Holy Ghost for that neighbor come on Zion open up your mouth and pray and as they pray, give us a sound of a rushing wind. As they pray, come on, pray. In the name of Jesus, come on, pray. Come on, pray. That's it, pray. Come on, pray. Pray, pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. You're anointed. You're anointed with infinite power. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Shatarabha, shatarabha hosa. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm anointed with infinite power. I am anointed with infinite power. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. He is the intercessor. Come on, Zion, pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray until yokes are broken. Pray until chains are loosed. Pray until demons are feared. Pray until devils are destroyed. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray in Pentecost. Pray with Pentecostal power. Pray with Pentecostal power. Pray with Pentecostal power. Pray. That's it. That's it. That's it. I, I hear a sound. That's it. That's it. That's it. I hear a sound. That's it. Pray. Pray with Pentecostal power. There's a sound coming. Ah, there's a shayado raka. There is a sound coming under the shit. There is a breaking. There is a breaking. There is a breaking and a destroying of the yokes. There is a breaking. There is a sound. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. That's it. Pentecost is here. That's it. Keep pressing, Zion. Press. Where my prayer warriors at? Press. Where my intercessors at? Press. Pray in the spirit. Pray in your heavenly language. Pray, pray, pray. Push, push, push. Travail. Travail. One sound. One sound. One sound. One voice. Travail. Their lives depend.
depend on it. Your life depends on it. Travail. I have infinite power. Infinite power. Yosabahaya. Usanda rakadaya. Sitebo roho. Samaya. Oh yes, I feel the Holy Ghost in here now. He's stirring up the water. He's troubling the water. Jump on in, saints. Jump on in. Jump on in the water. He's stirring the angel. The angel. My God, I shot out of The angel is here. 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 Come on, make it Pentecost. Make it Pentecost. He's staring. He's staring. He's staring. Come on, lift those hands, open your mouth, and bless him in here. He's here. The angel is here. He's staring. He's moving. He's shaking. It's Pentecost. It's Pentecost. It's Pentecost. While they continue, while they continue, right now, if you're here and you're in this power, in this atmosphere, if you have some situation that you're confronting, that you need somebody else to just touch and agree with you, with their power and your power, run down to this altar. Don't walk. Run down with your hands lifted. Run now. If you got a situation, a condition where you need somebody else to touch and agree that their power can connect with your power, then run down here now for prayer. The Spirit of the Lord is in this house. The Spirit of the Lord is moving. He's moving. He's moving. He's shaking. He's destroying. He's restoring. He's reviving. He's refilling. He's renewing. Ooh, yeah. God, we give you glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and give him praise. Come, Come on, on, run, 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 run down here. Bless his name. These preachers will pray with you. Hallelujah, run, run, hallelujah. Run. run in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Run in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. You have infinite power. You Thank have infinite power. Run Thank in the Holy Jesus. Ghost. Run, run, run. Hallelujah. Run through a truth. Run through our truth. Run through our truth. Leap on the wall. Run, run, run. Glory, glory, glory. 